I want to uh, show you up-to-date scientific evidence to prove that uh, the Ninja wolfberry, wolfberry is a very good thing to have in your toolkit. But first of all, I believe we have to understand what's going on in our country, in our society, not only in healthcare, but as a society in general. We live right now in very perilous times, as I'm sure you know, where decisions are being made mostly because of financial issues. And I believe that this is the main reason why our healthcare system is in chaos. And I don't think anybody's going to disagree with that, not since this, this book came out. You see, it came out in 2001, the result of a committee of doctors throughout the United States commissioned by the National Academy of Science. This was in response to the shocking study in 1998 that showed that 100,000 people die each year in the United States as a result of prescription drugs. And I'm sure you remember that. We were shocked, and so was the National Academy of Science, the Institute of Medicine, and the National Institute of Health. The result of a study looking at why this is going on was published in the form of a book, Crossing the Quality Chasm, a new healthcare system for the 21st century. So it is no longer an opinion, but a fact that we have a very dysfunctional healthcare system. In fact, it should be better to say we have a disease care system. Now, it's really easy to bash doctors, and I suppose I can kick my own dog, but the truth goes beyond that. I don't think it's so much the doctors doing this and that. You know, I, I teach at the medical school. I'm a, I'm, a part of the, I'm a member of the admissions committee at the medical school here up on the hill, and so I know that doctors are trying. Uh, you know, they're humans. Uh, we make mistakes. I think what's really going on is that we're eating so poorly that we have a vast array of chronic conditions coming from our poor diets, bad food, bad water, bad air, poor relationships. And so what has been the answer that doctors are being trained to use? The tools, drugs. And now we're seeing many books coming out saying that this is fool's gold. We're only treating the symptoms. We're not focusing on the root of the problems. This book was written by Dr. Angel, a former editor to the New England Journal of Medicine, who wrote an article, and then she left. She quit the journal. And the title of the article was, is Academic Medicine for Sale? And the answer is yes. And here, is the owner. Drug companies are financing research in the United States at medical schools. So doctors get the impression that the only way to work in healthcare is to use a drug. You know, I think drugs are fine. I mean, I bet you a, f a few of you here are taking some medication. So there is a place for them. But I think they're overprescribed, overused, overmarketed. I would say that of all the drugs prescribed, we, we have a legitimate use of only 20% of them. The other 80% you could do without if you just change your diet. And that's what I do in my clinic all day long get people off medication by changing their diets. This is nothing new. You've already, you know, I'm preaching to the choir. You already know all this. But I want you to know that your intuitive understanding of all this is hard scientific evidence today 
And the medical journals are beginning to say that it soon will be malpractice for a physician who does not discuss nutrition at each visit with their patients. <laughs> Hippocrates, a founder of medicine, food is the best medicine. Maimonides in the 12th century Spain, food is the best medicine. The founder of modern medicine, William Osler, food is the best medicine. And if that's too testosterone for you, well, women too. <laughs> Hildegard de Bingen, also a saint, a Catholic saint in Middle Age Europe, said that food is the best medicine. What a noble profession to be a doctor. I'm proud to be a physician. And so rewarding to see the medical profession going back to the roots of healthcare, which is nutrition. So it's no mystery why we're so sick. We're addicted to sugar, and I really mean addicted to sugar. You know, the other day, uh, I have a radio program here in Salt Lake City. In fact, it's going national uh, next month, so you might be able to catch it in your, in your cities across the United States. Anyway, I, I was commenting on this article that came out uh, from uh, the General uh, Dentistry Journal, the last issue. They are recommending now that you drink soda pop, liquid candy, with a straw because you don't want it to touch your teeth because you're going to lose your enamel and get cavities. <laughs> well, isn't that wonderful? <laughs> if it's doing that to your teeth, what is it doing to the rest of the softer tissues when it, when it goes down the hatch? And so I say, get a larger straw, one that will come out the other end. The addiction to soda pop is so terrible that people think themselves holy, I guess, because they don't drink beer, but they drink pop. You know, that is such a discongruous thought. It, it's amazing. You know, what is alcohol after all? Fermented sugar. And the main problem is that we have subsidized farmers of America to grow so much sugar that is so cheap to put in everything. We call it high fructose corn syrup. And that is what's killing us right now. Your tax money at work. And so this is the main message that I want to give you today. The evidence is overwhelming that we have been barking up the wrong tree. See, now we know everything about disease. We describe disease very well. But we don't realize until now that all diseases share the same mechanisms. So what would you rather do? Would you rather hack at the leaves of the problem, at each little disease as if they were different, or hack at the roots of disease, the very simple, simple basic mechanisms that underlie, underlie all diseases? And that's the beauty of what science is going, doing today. Here's the journal Science from March two, uh, 2001, March 23rd. On the cover, it shows you, in a nutshell, what research is doing right now. It's simple, so simple. You've already heard about the cell membrane, and you know that the cell membrane is made up of oils, fats, phospholipids, and yellow. And then you know that there are proteins floating, floating on this very liquid and flexible sea of fat. Those proteins are like antennas to pick up messages that come from other, other cells. And you know the messengers that come into a cell. You know, they have fancy names, but really they're just messages of cell communication. Hormones like insulin and thyroid, enzymes like digestive enzymes, neurotransmitters like serotonin and dopamine. And so you don't need to worry about that incredible soup of messages. They're all simply messengers. It turns out that we're discovering that these antennas, the proteins, do not work well. They're not functional. They're not built well unless you attach the right sugars to them. And so you can see the power of nutrition. I mentioned already 
fats, proteins, sugars. If you're eating the wrong sugars, you're rendering the whole structure of the cell membrane dysfunctional, deaf, if you will. And so you've heard of insulin resistance, right? Well, now you know what it is. It's a dysfunction of the receptors for insulin. And insulin comes in as a key and fits into a lock, which is a receptor. And so the cell membrane gets the idea. Open up so that sugar can come in into the cell. And so what we've got here is a very simple statement glycobiology, how important the right polysaccharides are. And so what are we doing as a society? We're eating the wrong sugars. And so we're sticking the wrong sugars to these proteins, and that's the problem. And so along with many other physicians, I am I'm of the opinion that the true alternative to treating cell membrane issues is the pharmaceutical approach, the journal Science three years ago, made a huge statement. They said the pharmaceutical revolution of the 50s and 60s has petered out, quote unquote. Why? Because it's not working. And you are the forefront of people realizing that that approach is flawed for chronic diseases. So you can see here how the dawn of a new era of medical thinking is upon us. I'm only one of many. There'll be many more following. And I hope that you are able to work in an integrative approach, because I think the patient is the one to benefit if we can combine forces. I'm totally open and willing to do it. That's why I'm here. I believe in the message you have. I believe in the message that Young Living has. And look at this from a leading medical journal. Nutrition is the cornerstone of preventive medicine, the handmaiden of curative medicine, and the responsibility of every physician at each visit. These are heady days for nutritional scientists as newer understanding of food and health promise to bring nutrition to the forefront of clinical medicine. That is exactly what I do in my practice. And I tell you, it is so rewarding to see people finally get better and get off all the far, uh, drugs that have been prescribed. Doctors must become nutritionally educated if they are to maintain their patients' confidence and stay abreast of evolving modern medicine. You know, we're evolving, all right? This is the evolution of man, isn't it? <laughs> There's a new science out there called nutrigenomics. It's so exciting to see proof that oils, herbs, micronutrients change your genetic tendencies to where you can avoid terrible destinies if you don't change the way you eat. So what's the problem with your genes? You're not locked into them. You might be too tight in them, <laughs> but you can overcome that. And so, Cool Hand Luke said it best, you know, does anybody remember Cool Hand Luke, Paul Newman? Only the women say yes, yeah. <laughs> well, what we have here is a failure to communicate. You see, if you mess up the cell membrane, you're not going to allow for the messenger to come in and hook up to the cell membrane, and so you end up making more insulin to get the job done. And so all that extra insulin and extra sugar that ends up uh, floating in the bloodstream because it wasn't able to get in the cell goes everywhere. And I can give you example after example of what happens when that starts to occur. And guess what? About 40% of you are insulin resistant. I can tell. All I have to do is look at your midriff. All right? If a man has more than 40 inches, he's insulin resistant. If a woman has more than 35 inches, she's insulin resistant. You know, I still find people that are afraid of fruits. They say, oh, I'm diabetic, I can't eat fruit. All the while, they're stuffing Twinkies down their mouth <laughs> and muffins and, and a lot of pasta and a lot of bread. Please, 
Look at the, this remarkable article came out this year, March 3rd, showing you exactly what's going on. The cell membrane, the sea of fat, the proteins, the receptors, the proteins. And look at the fruit raining upon the cell membrane. The sugar and fruits is perfect for the cell membranes. Do not be afraid of fruits when you're diabetic. And so I still get people saying, hey, should I drink fruit juice if I'm diabetic? Well, of course you shouldn't if all you're drinking is snapples and ocean spray, which is nothing but garbage full of high fructose corn syrup. And so you know where I'm going. The Nisha wolf, wolfberry has the right polysaccharides, the right sugars. And so the cell membrane will be a lot healthier. And of course, food in general is giving you all the ingredients that you need to fortify uh, your cell membrane with. That is why I believe nutrition is so simple. And so when we talk about a whole food, and that's what I prefer, you know, I don't supplement anybody in my clinic. I don't sell anything in my clinic either. I believe that if you start supplementing, you are enabling people to continue their bad nutritional habits. So I do not supplement at all until people show me that they've been able to lick their sugar addiction. And so that's why I prefer whole foods like the Ninja wolf Wolfberry. You know where the Ninja Wolfberry comes from? You know about the preparation of the Ninja Wolfberry? You know, one thing is to have the product, another one is to get it on the table without jeopardizing uh, the, the very fine micronutrients in it. And so the, market, the, the processing has to be key. Well, the Ninja Wolfberry, they throw in other fruits too. You know, so you know the ingredients already, right? Polysaccharides, polyphenols, zeaxanthins, betaine, beta carotene, vitamin C, calcium fiber. Incidentally, the, the Ninja Wolfberry has a whole lot of those ingredients a lot higher than any other nutrient. And so when you start adding other fruits, to market this uh, product, uh, you can see that it can pack a pretty big punch. And so let me just recap. And I have to do it because it's so simple. I, I just don't want you to miss a point because it's so simple. The Ninja Wolfberry and good nutrition will fix your cell membrane, will correct the pH of your blood so that all the communication, cellular communication can take place by correcting oxidative stress, giving you the energy that the mitochondria needs to open the gates of communication, correcting the toxicity at many levels, including de detoxification in the liver and intestines, and correcting the inflammation provi by providing the micronutrients that reduce inflammation. That is why the, qu the quintessential problem in our society today, insulin resistance, is striking at practically, and I mean all diseases. And so you can reduce this and reduce the bulk of chronic diseases by eating whole foods high in micronutrients like the Ninja Wolfberry. And so if you don't do that, then your approach is going to be pharmaceutical. And so I'd rather you went to whole food. And the evidence for whole food and the Ninja Wolfberry, and you can find it in the booklet, it's overwhelming. And that is why, by working on the basic mechanisms of disease to heal the cell membrane, you will heal heart disease, lower cholesterol, heal insulin resistance, diabetes, obesity, lower cholesterol, hypertension, arthritis, the immune system is improved, less cancer, better brain function, and uh, counteracting the effects of the chronic degeneration of the brain that we have a 50% chance of having if we get to the age of 80 at this present pace, uh, healing the intestines, which, I, which is where I believe most of our function is, et cetera, et cetera. And so let me finish by telling you a story. Gandhi, he used to give uh, advice to people, you know, uh, two or three hours a day, and he'd sit under a tree, and people would line up and f a long time in the sun, finally this mom with her child gets up to Gandhi after waiting all day long in the heat. Gandhi, please tell my kid
to quit eating candy. And Gandhi says, come back tomorrow. And the woman is puzzled, but hey, if Gandhi says, you do. So she lines up in the heat of the sun the next day. Finally, she gets to the top of the line again, and please, Gandhi, tell my kid to quit eating candy. Gandhi says, quit eating candy. And the woman says, why didn't you tell him that before? Well, before, I was eating candy myself. <laughs> so I want to look at you in the eye. And I want to challenge you. You want to eat whole food? You want to sell the Nisha Wolfberry? You will have more power of conviction. You will sell more. If you speak truthfully and you say, I quit refined sugars today. Thank you very much.